Hi everybody! Lesson 3 in a unit on applications of integration deals with one of our nearest and dearest friends, volumes of solids of revolution. Uh, for those of us that took IB math at the standard level last year, we know sort of how it works, kind of, but I'm looking forward to showing us how to do it for real. For real. And by what I'm talking about, I mean here is some function. Y is a function of X. And I want to take that function and I want to revolve it 360 degrees about the X axis. I want to create a solid in three dimensions. It's a solid of revolution where this function just spins around the pole of the X axis and you get some thing, and, and I, I don't even know how to describe what it is that you get, but, oh, but you get this, uh, let's see, right, and you've got this, it's like a vase kind of a thing. Yeah, like a vase. And I want to find the volume of the vase. Well, to find the volume of the vase, we take a little cross-sectional slice, like this. Rectangle is the only things we know. And we spin that rectangle about the x-axis. And if we spin the rectangle about the x-axis, what we get are tuna cans. And I know how to find the volume of a tuna can. The volume of a tuna can, your textbook author will call it a disc, but we all know that it's a tuna can. The volume of a tuna can is pi r squared times the height. Well, the height of the tuna can is the same as a teeny tiny change in x. Man, I've heard this song before. And then the radius of the tuna can appears to correspond with the height of the function, some special place. Well, of course, we stack a whole bunch of tuna cans together, and that does a pretty good job of approximating the volume of the vase. But I don't want an approximation. I want an actualmation. And so the way we do that is we say, okay, I'm going to take as delta x gets closer to zero, then the volume by disks is an integral from a to b, a to b, of pi stays pi, function stays function, delta x becomes dx. This is how we are going to figure out volume. Oh, sorry. This is how we are going to figure out volumes using disks. That's our plan. That's our plan. So, what's it look like? Take the function y equals secant x from. 0 to pi over 3, you take this region, I want to revolve it 360 degrees about the x-axis, I want the volume of the lampshady type thing that you get when you spin that thing 360 degrees about the x-axis. So the volume, by revolving about the x-axis, is an integral from 0 to pi over 3 of pi radius squared height. Uh, pi can come outside of the integral. Remember, the integral is a semi-permeable membrane. Constants can flow back and forth. Variables cannot. Pi radius squared. Well, the radius of each tuna can is going to depend on the function. And then the heights of the tuna cans are teeny tiny changes in x. That's the way this goes. Wait a second. I know a function whose derivative is secant squared x. That function is tan x. So I just have to evaluate tan x at pi over 3 and 0 and subtract. I know that the tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. I know that the tangent of 0 is 0. And so I get 
Pi Radical 3. Isn't that beautiful? You can find volumes! If you liked that, you're going to love this. I'm going to take the region bounded by e to the x from negative 1 to 1. This region. And we're going to revolve it about the x-axis, 360 degrees. And you're going to say to yourself, this is so easy! Because what's going to happen is I'm going to spin that 360 degrees about the x-axis. I'm going to get some solid. It looks kind of like a lampshade. And so I'm going to figure out the volume by revolving about the x-axis. And I should actually spell that correctly. That's the integral from negative 1 to 1 of pi r squared height. The height is going to be a teeny tiny change in x. The radius of the tuna can is going to depend on that function. Now here I'm going to be a little bit more careful. e to the x squared is the same as e to the 2x. And so what I would like to do is I'd like to find an antiderivative of e to the 2x. And the antiderivative of e to the 2x is 1 half e to the 2x. It's sort of a u substitution that we can do mentally. u is 2x, so du is 2dx. And so I've got to compensate for the 2 that I have to throw in there by multiplying by 1 half evaluate from negative 1 to 1. So this is pi over 2 times e to the 2 minus pi over 2 times e to the minus 2. And that is the volume of your solid of revolution. Pi function squared. As long as we're going about the x-axis. As long as we're going about the x-axis. So here's the thing. What if, what if there are two curves involved? What if you have y equals radical x and you have y equals x and this region is going 360 degrees about the x-axis? Then... The outside edge of our solid it makes kind of like a bowl shape. That's created by the blue function. But the red function is carving out a pointy hole in the middle of our bowl. So we have a bowl with a pointed hole inside. And so the question is, how do we deal with that? And the answer is really, really simple. Ultimately, we want to do the volume of the bowl, right? That's the volume of the bowl minus the volume of the hole. Each of them is a pi times function squared. The blue thing gives us the volume of the whole bowl if there were no red curve anywhere in sight. And the, the red integral gives us the volume of the whole if there were no bowl. So if we subtract those, we ought to get the volume that we're looking for. Now, nobody writes out two separate integrals for that. We write one integral. And the reason we write one integral is because the properties of integrals say that if I take the integral from A to B of, if I take two integrals from A to B and subtract them, that's the same as taking one integral like so. And so the way we generally write this, uh, we call this the washer method because there's a hole in the middle of a, of a solid and that hole is also shaped like a solid. Anyway, it's the washer method. We take pi times the integral from a to b of the big radius squared minus the small radius squared. That's generally the way this goes. So in this particular case, 
we've got pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x squared dx. And I know how to do that. That's pi times 1 half x squared minus 1 third x cubed evaluated between 0 and 1. And that's pi over 6. So if there are two functions, we treat it exactly the same as if there were one function twice. It almost makes sense. I will throw one more wrinkle in there before our time is done. And I recognize that it is almost done. What if... Oh, wow. Hang on. We'll pause. Oh my gosh, I hit pause and this thing popped up. Okay, so there it is. What if... The axis of rotation is not the x-axis. What if, instead of rotating about the x-axis, I want to rotate about y equals negative 1? And then you get some something where you got a hole in the middle of a solid. The solid's kind of lampshady. Kind of lampshady. You got this thing going on. And, and in the middle of that, there's a hole. So what the heck does that look like anyway? How would I find its volume? Well, it turns out that the volume is oddly similar. We're going to take big R squared and subtract little r squared. That actually is the way it still works. We take the big radius, the radius that forms the outside edge of our solid, and then we take little r, which is the radius that gives us the inside edge of our solid, and we do a pi big r squared minus little r squared. Pi. There's a pi. There's a pi. You were probably screaming that at home, weren't you? Good for you. Good for you. Big r. Big r runs from our axis of rotation to the function that generates the outside edge. Now, under normal circumstances, we would just say x. But we have this extra one unit of length. And so it turns out that the outermost edge has a radius of x plus 1. Because it's the function y equals x plus another 1 to get down to the axis of rotation. Similarly, little r, little r runs from the axis of rotation to the function that generates the inside edge. And the function that generates the inside edge is x squared, so the small radius is x squared plus 1. And we take that difference dx. So you can crank that out in the privacy of your own home. It turns out to be 7 pi over 15. How you do that is easy in terms of a crank it out standpoint, but what you do is rather difficult in terms of recognizing, OK, here's how I figure out my big R. Here's how I figure out my little r. OK, so when we gather, oh, no, let's do one. Let's do one before you go. Let's imagine. This is y equals 3. Uh, this is the function y equals 2 minus cosine x. This is the function y equals cosine x. So I'm going to take the region here from 0 to pi over 2, and I'm going to revolve that 360 degrees about y equals 3. And I want to do integral 0 to pi over 2, big R squared minus little r squared dx. What would big R be? Big R would have to run from the axis of rotation down to the curve that generates the outside edge. Is it red or blue? Good. Good. I heard you. So how is how do we figure out big R? Well, big R is 3 minus whatever cosine x is. The big radius runs from 3 down to cosine x. Similarly, little r 
runs from the axis of rotation down to the function that generates the inside edge of our solid. So that's 3 minus 2 minus cosine x. 3 minus 2 minus cosine x. We subtract those volumes, the bowl minus the whole, and we end up with, to three decimal places, 14.346. Okay, if this is the kind of stuff you can do, this is the kind of stuff you ought to do. Fantastic. We will practice tomorrow.